Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramansa Yogananda. Many people scoff at the idea of having a guru. True to human nature generally, they make a virtue of their scoffing. I am responsible for what I do, they announce. Responsible for my mistakes as well as for my victories. What would I ever learn if I handed over my development to someone else? To depend on another for guidance would be an act of spiritual cowardice. It would be understandable for someone gifted with some trivial ability, for instance, with words to insist on doing his crossword puzzle himself without letting anyone else help him. But supposing even in such tri trivial matters he had no such gift, what virtue would there be in refusing to learn? For that matter, where would the gift itself come from? That which is a gift is not a native ability. Still, crossword puzzles are hardly an important challenge. What if a person wants to do something daring, to climb a cliff, for instance, but refuse to study the art of mountain climbing? he would climb at the risk of his life. And how much more is risked than physical life in the great adventure of the divine search, where the risk is to salvation itself? Where is the sacrifice in seeking guidance? Even a mountain guide wouldn't pres presume to do one's climbing for one. His purpose would be only to help the neophyte, neophyte to climb safely. To have a wise guru, guru is not a sign of weakness, but of plain common sense. All the saints, aware as they are of the hazards of the adventure, agree on the importance of having a guide or guru. And these are the heroes speaking, not cowards or spiritual weaklings. Jesus emphasized the importance of having a teacher by asking John to baptize him. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 3, we read of his coming to John. Thus Jesus said to John, It cometh, it becometh us to fill, fulfill all righteousness. In the Bhagavad Gita, the fourth chapter, Sri Krishna says, Open thyself to those who have attained wisdom. They will be thy teachers. Ask questions to them, both verbally and mentally. Serve them faithfully and with devotion. How is the devotee to recognize one who has attained wisdom? The Bhagavad Gita gives us this inspiration, inspiring description of the sage. By this sign he is known, being of equal grace to comrade, comrades and friends, chance comers, strangers, lovers, enemies, aliens and kinsmen, loving all alike, evil or good. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Good morning and happy Sunday to all again. So we start 
this part with a whisper from eternity from Yogananda that, as many of you know, is a book of poems, as Yogananda said, poems and prayers that are satisfied. So this is number 72, O Divine Sculpture, ch chisel thou my life. Every sound that I make, let it have the vibration of thy voice. Thy thought, every thought that I think, let it be saturated with the consciousness of thy presence. Let every feeling that I have glow with thy love. Let every act of my will be impregnated with thy divine vitality. Let every thought, every expression, every ambition be ornamented by thee. O divine sculptor, chisel thou my life according to thy design. It seems very appropriate that this Sunday, uh, uh, the theme is, do we have a, the need of a guru? Because the, we just had the Friday Guru Purnima, and this changes every year depending on the moon, not depending on the sun. And also we had the Kriya initiation, and today is the day of Babaji, commemoration of Babaji. It's not his birthday because we do not know when he was, when that date is, but it's the day that Babaji came to Yogananda and gave him the blessing to go to the West and to start his mission. And in, in a very true sense, all of us would not be here if it wasn't, if it wasn't for that day. I can't remember the year, it was 19, 1927, 20, 1920, 1, year, 101 years ago. So it, it has been a very blessed weekend and I think uh, you can feel it. I. You can feel so much light, so much spiritual power that I, 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 I ask myself, is, is it possible to measure this, the effect? It's not possible, but for sure it has an effect, for sure on us, but not only on us. I think it emanates a light in the whole world. To answer uh, to this question, do we need a guru? A friend came to mind when I was studying at my high school, when I was more young, younger than now, and this friend, we had, we had to write um, something on courage, and the, the theme was, what is courage? And he wrote, this is courage, and he gave his paper to the teacher and he gave uh, he marked it with a very high um, grade because in one phrase he actually expressed what courage was in that moment so <laughs> so when you ask should we need a guru we can say yes or we can try to understand what we really need I, I remember a joke that a Shivani said once some time ago you know that uh, that uh, <laughs> how many guru do you need to change a light bulb? <laughs> Five. <laughs> Someone. Only one, but the lamp must really want to change. And that is the same for us. Well, do we need a guru? So if our uh, if the scope of our life is to live a normal life, then we do not need a guru. Once someone asked Swami Krenanda, do I need a guru? And he said, no, you don't need a guru. 
just if you want to find God. If you want to find God, then yes, you need to, to have a guru. In other words, depending on if we want to change our life completely, if we really want to attain the perfect freedom, then yes, we need a guide, just like Swami wrote in this reading. So if you want, if you want to learn a piano, just to play home for a few songs, just for yourselves and for the neighbors, <laughs> then you do not need a teacher. But if you do want to become a good player, professional, or if you want to inspire others, if you want to share your music, then you do need someone that teaches you. In, in, some sen in a sense, the most important word is if we ne ha have the need to become disciples. And the answer to that question is yes. If we found, have found our guru, or if we have not yet felt that need of having the guide of a guru, then we have to be disciples of life. Sister Gyanamata was the most advanced disciple of Yogananda, said once um, he, she had not yet found Yogananda, and she said, I've decided that until my guru arrives, I will make my life become my guru, and I would have learned from every situation and from every person that comes to me what is that the divine wants and gives me in this situation. And in, in a sense, we always have to be disciples of life, because once we have a guru, once we have this perfect channel uh, to the divine that guide us to freedom, we have to be open to all to the presence of the divine in everything that happens to us in our personal life, but also in the general way. What is the lesson? What is what Divine Mother wants to take away to help us expand? Something interesting, you have for sure heard this phrase, that when the disciple is taken away, the guru appears. Um, I remember a story of a Guru Bhai that is in India. He had heard about Babaji, and he had heard about Kriya Yoga, and he was searching to get in contact. He wanted to find Babaji, he wanted to experiment his, he wanted to learn the Kriya, but he did not know anything about Ananda or self-realization. And then when he said that one evening, he dreamt Babaji, and he came to him, and he did not even know the Kriya, sorry, he knew about Babaji, and Babaji came in a dream, and he said, you have to learn Kriya Yoga, and you have to learn it from the blue people, and he woke up, and he said, what does the blue people mean, and so he looked at Babaji, and into internet, and was searching, and he found Ananda. And he saw people in blue that are like Shivani, that are Naya Swami, renunciates. And in a certain way, it's interesting that Babaji is much more present than what we feel and we think. In fact, our Guru is even more present than what we think. Because Yogananda says that this is a, an eternal um, a relation. Uh, since one arrives in, a, in an incarnation, the guide is waiting until we are ready to dedicate sincerely and deeply into our uh, spiritual path. And then he will appear. There is the story of this young man that went to listen to a, a speech of Swami Kriyananda discourse, and he, Swami was talking about discipleship, and he was thinking if his Sai Baba was his, his, ma his master. And in the moment, he, as soon as he felt, what well, he was thinking that something, something fell from the, from a shelf to his 
the hands, and it was a picture of Sai Baba. So when, when the disciple is ready, the master arrives. We don't have to concentrate so much on how to find our master, but to become disciples, more perfect disciples uh, of life or of the master that we have found. In the reading, Swami says that there are three principal ways he talks he talks about two and i will add one in the reading of the bhagavad gita he said ask questions to those who have arrived to this wisdom externally and internally follow them with with uh, devotion and faith and this way you are a disciple. That way you can obtain the, uh, and, and absorb the divine presence as a channel of God. In such a way, this could be compared to, to an app, an app of a mobile phone. If you want to follow someone on Facebook, what do you do? You first have to have the application, the app on your on your phone that has to be an iPhone or in our case a spiritual iPhone in our brain and this is the point in our forehead where we have to insert this application and what is this app, app? is attunement to be attuned we have to be here this is the point where we can be attuned with divine consciousness or with a, a um, a realized master when you have your up up on your forehead then you find your s s the pr divine presence you find your guru and before you put like on their pe page you just feel i feel this attraction i feel this devotion and when when you click a, a like then you go and you follow the page, and then you you habilitate the possibility of receiving notice uh, to your. So every time that the guru comes out with something, you receive it. So you just concentrate. You're doing something else, and you concentrate on your spiritual iPhone, and something comes to you, a notification comes that says, "Where are you? Be with me. Try to." Come and be in the center, and then you stop, you do it. And another thing that we have to do is that we have to install another application that is Messenger. So you can have a private chat, a direct chat with the Master and with God. So, as Swami said in the reading, Every time that we have a situation of challenge, we just send a message, what would you do, Master? And he would answer, like in a live chat, at a higher level, obviously. We have to do this. Swami once Uh, Anand, the, the spiritual director of Ananda, together with Kirtani, he told me once that he was talking with Swami here, and Swami had 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 taken a decision that was very big decision and was very a big influence to everything, to for Ananda for everyone, and Anand asked. Uh, have you asked Master about this? And he said he was surprised, and he re answered, I do not do anything without asking Master. Many of us are Kriyaban and disciples here, but how many of us can say that, that we do not do anything before feeling interiorly what is the divine will, if it's in tune with the, the, the will of the Guru? It is a very important thing to develop. It is during the day to practice all the time in every moment. How can I do this? 
How can I do it better? Use me as a channel. An interesting thing is that Yogananda said about Rajasi Janakananda, that was his most advanced disciple. Someone asked, uh, how was it possible that he grew spiritually so fast? And Yogananda said, because he knows how to listen. Know how to listen means two things. One, it means that there was a question. Because when we listen, it means there's um, we are trying to get in contact uh, and to receive a message. And another thing is that we f f are in the presence of the Guru, of the Divine, that in a in a physical presence, it means, sense means a thinking of the Guru, but in a subtle way is uh, oh, uh, using our, our up, as I said, in the spiritual eye. Once every hour, before every email we write, before a, a phone call, whatever important thing you have to do just to be there and to listen and to try to be in that space where you can receive, receive that message from Master, from God. And another thing that it means is to try to uh, go deeper in our understanding. And that means to read, uh, means to read what is inspiring to go deeper, to feel more presence. It can be books about the life of saints, but to try to be deeper and to understand more the teachings, the spiritual teachings. To have a successful marriage, they say there are two rules. One is that the wife is always right. Many husbands smile and then and wives as well because they feel that it's true. So first rule, the wife is always true. And, and the second one is if something uh, d doesn't work, refer yourself to the first rule. In our relationship with God, really it is so. Um, Yogananda told um, Swami, I, the first time they met, I will not ask anything from you that has not been asked if I don't feel that it's God that is asking. Um, where we feel a resistance, it is important to try to find a way to go further and to understand in a deeper way what is happening. Something that helped me is that every time that I read and I find that Swami have said or written that I do not understand, that just doesn't, I can't understand, I just stop, I concentrate, I concentrate on my spiritual iPhone on my forehead and I send a message and I say, please, can you correct, what, can you let me know what you really want to say and i think if my if my consciousness was infinite how could i see this and it always changes my perception not only at a mental level but also at a feeling level the second thing that swami said was to serve yogananda said if you want to be in tune with me serve my uh, my my work because this puts you into the flow that goes through the master it's a bit like a difference of being next to a river and to put some water on your head or get into it and swim it is it is si similar but it's so different so when we try to serve, to give to the fountain of our inspiration. 
It means to when we try to share this inspiration with others, because Swami said that the most, the highest um, uh, work of of a disciple is to be a channel for uh, his guru, and that the most important work in the spiritual path is to be a channel of the divine as much as we can perceive it. Uh, channeling the calmness, the joy, what we have arrived to, uh, the, to the point where we arrived to manifest. And the last thing, this is something that Swami did not write in this, uh, in this text, but it's important. When Yogananda uh, met Dr. Lewis, his first disciple, he told, he told him a lot of things. The, fir the most important thing was, please, uh, promise that to me that you will not avoid me. It's okay. And uh, Dr. Lewis uh, said that it was so difficult to maintain, but that he managed because it is very easy to be open to the divine when everything flows nicely and when we do everything right, when we do something that is inspiring, then uh, it's easy to say everything is uh, God's. Well, when something does not work, then we keep it f to ourselves. And in that moment, we create a separation. That's the moment where we have to open our hearts so that the Divine Presence can come in and clean what is necessary. Swami Kriyananda, at the end of his life, whatever he was he would do, he would sing before a discourse or whatever thing he would do. He would sing, Door of My Life. Whoever knows this recording in Italian, you know that the accent is in the, the word, I have opened the door for you, for thy, the divine. It is important, it's important to learn how to keep our door of, of our heart open, also when it's, and especially when it's difficult. So in this moment, in this period, it really is a great opportunity to learn, to leave, let our heart open to the divine presence, the divine, to the, to the masters, and to learn how to be pure, better channels. So I conclude with a technique that Yogananda gave for attunement. And at the end, I will read a letter that Yogananda wrote to his to one of his disciples. And it's, we can think that it's a letter for each one of us or from God for whatever soul in this creation. So oh, sit down with your spine straight. And before doing it, let's inhale and tense the body to recharge and let go all the tensions. In inhale, tense gradually, vibrate every cell of your body, exhale and relax. Again, twice, uh, calm, fill all your cells with prana, with divine force. And the last time, again, the disciple you can fill yourself with the presence of Yogananda. Put your right finger, index finger, on the spiritual eye. This is a technique that Yogananda gave to awaken and magnetize the spiritual eye. And try to feel that the energy that comes from the finger is awakening this light. as if it, it's a light that becomes stronger and stronger and brighter and brighter. And then relax your hand and stay in a, in a concentrated state on the spiritual eye. And in that point, call Yogananda or whatever master, or if you do not, if you are not a disciple, if you feel inspired 
you can do it if you are feel inspired by one of these masters, or you can visualize what whatever that the divine represents for you. It can be light, or it can be divine mother. And call deeply. Send a message from your spiritual iPhone. Try to visualize the form the v of the face of the Master, of the Divine. And through that form, feel that this Divine Presence is illimited is without limit and consciousness comes in through your spiritual eye and expands in your consciousness. Now try to open yourself completely and absorb in every atom And in this presence, listen to these words, words from Yogananda. You must never lose courage. Divine Mother sent me to pilot you out of the clouds of your mind. Everybody's difficulty is different, and he or she has to win that test of karma. Overcome all by constant inward calling on God and utmost devotion in words, thoughts, action, and obedience to Guru. Your troubles I do not mind. I will never give up my job about you. It is better to conquer one evil and not live with it forever. Never for a moment identify yourself with momentary flashes of error. Have no fear, even though I am gone from your visible eyes, you will never be alone. I may not scold you then, but I shall ever be with you and through Divine Mother guard you from all harm and will constantly whisper, to your guidance, to you guidance through your loving self. So do not become discouraged and tired, but ever be interested in working for Divine Mother, no matter if war, sickness, death dances around you. Be cut to pieces, but never give up. Be like the Divine Leech, suck all the blood of wisdom, even though torn to bits. A smooth life is not a victorious life, and I will give you lots of my good karma so you will get through. I will not only ever give forgive you, but ever lift you up, no matter how many times you fall. Keep incessantly so unceasingly trying to conquer, not only will I invisibly help you, but I will help you visibly through many here. I am not building a mansion for you or giving you riches which will perish, but am making an imperishable home with all riches in my Divine Mother's mansion. Paramahansa Yogananda. May you receive blessings from God. Mm -hmm.